Don't you just hate it? When you've shot your footage, it's looking peng. You've shot it in that flat profile so that it's looking all juicy and you've got all of that dynamic range. You grade it and you think, hold on a sec, mate. Where's me skies gone? There's nothing worse, really, mate, is there? Turn your magic on, bring your shit set. Everything you want to dream away. We are legends every day. That's what she told him. I feel my heart beating. going on you lot what are you all saying um i hope you're all sweet your boy here has just been on a trip to sri lanka mate lucky geezer and obviously i was shooting everything that happened out there because that's kind of like what i do and i get back and i put all of me footage in here and i'm editing it and it's starting to look a bit sick but then i'm grading it and i'm thinking nah here we go again I am literally the deadest geezer when it comes to grading. Now, a lot of YouTubers will kind of say that they're kind of good at a bit of everything, but I'm gonna hold my hands up, mate. My grading is horrendous. It's never, ever been good. It's literally been like the worst part of my asset of filmmaking for pretty much my entire career as a filmmaker. But it's only been recently that I've actually felt that I'm starting to get to grips with grading. My main issue was once I graded my image, I'd lose my skies and then I'd be like, hold on, where's my sky gone? My beautiful clouds that I captured, all of the detail up there, the color, gone mate, done. So I'm gonna take you through a very, very simple and relatively quick way that you can actually retain your skies when you're grading because I always seem to lose mine, mate. It does my nutting. So anyway, let's get in. So as you can see, right here, we've got a shot of my boy, Mikey V, Mike Visuals. Anyway, he's hanging off the side of this, uh, this truck and I thought you know what let's get a little bit of handheld action in there no need to stabilize that he's on a truck it's going to be bumpy that's what the viewers are going to want to see so I left it in there but as you can see with the colors he's a bit underexposed it ain't looking great there's no color it's way too dark but we can still see the sky in the background the whole point of underexposing this ever so slightly is so that we can retain them highlights in the background so what do we do with a shot like this straight away we've got to grade it right we've got to get the exposure back up we can't really see mike's face the colors ain't there so we've got to add in a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation Boom, so we just brung up the image, we've increased the exposure, we've added in a little bit of saturation, and I've kind of got all my colors looking exactly how I want them to look. But, hold on, where's me sky gone? I've lost the detail in my sky, and right now I am absolutely fuming, mate. This is not ideal, lost me sky. Um, saving, yeah, auto save, nice one, mate. But anyway, no need to panic, mate. I've got a little cheeky way that we can retain our skies, and that is using the mask tool in La Metairie, bruv. So yeah, let's go in there and, um, and do it. So effects, La Metairie color, exactly the same as when you actually graded the original clip. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here on the Lemetterie color, and we are gonna grab this circle number. I just prefer using the circle one, but yeah, it's all good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask out the sky up here, right? Now it doesn't matter if you get some of the elements that aren't actually sky in your mask because it's not really gonna notice too much. Now, obviously you can be as delicate and as careful as you possibly want. It is gonna take more time, but you know what, if the shot's gonna look better, you might as well spend the time doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask out the sky around Mike. Now, one thing I definitely don't wanna do is reduce the exposure on Mike's face because it took quite a lot to actually just bring his face back up. So let's kind of get a little cheeky one on the sky up there. Now, what we're gonna do with our mask is we are gonna go down into the controls and we are gonna reduce the exposure. Now, if you check carefully, look, we can start to see some of that sky 
come back into play, mate. Now, this is unbelievable. We've just got our skies back, mate. Happy days. So as you can see, now we've obviously got the sky back in the bag, mate. This is wicked. But, mate, I'm not gonna lie, that mask is looking a bit dodgy. We need to whack a little bit of feathering on that mask so that it actually feathers out a little bit and looks a bit more El Naturel. Now what I've done here is I've feathered out the mask and I'm gonna kind of just adjust it a little bit to make sure that it kind of just looks normal instead of looking like a mask, which is the last thing we wanna do. Obviously, I'm gonna rearrange it for Mike so that his face doesn't get completely destroyed by my mask. And um, yeah, that there already isn't looking too shabby, mate. Only thing I do wanna do is actually bring a little bit more saturation into the shot. So let's get a little bit of saturation up there. Cool, yeah, nice. There we go. So I'll be honest with you, mate, that ain't even that bad already. So as you can see, we've got a lot more of our details in the highlights. Now obviously this does need a little bit of work, but as you can see, this is already starting to go in the right direction. Now one thing that you are gonna need to do on a moving shot is actually path your mask. So if you go over to your mask here, on mask one, if you click this little toggle animation, that will give you a keyframe. Now what you're gonna want to do is you are gonna want to follow your mask throughout and change it. So earlier on in the shot, we've got all of this white up here that we did not want to see. So we can actually change the mask here to retain a lot more of that detail. Obviously we wanna increase it on Mike's face because we can't really see his face anymore, which is not ideal. And then as you scrub through, that mask will actually change to the frame to adapt so that we're keeping all of that detail in there. And then obviously do the same again as the shot changes towards the end. We're gonna move this around Mike's face so that Mike's exposed on his boat race, which is his face. And obviously up here, we need to bring this tree back into play, mate, because it's just kind of lost in darkness now. So yeah, that actually ain't too bad. And that didn't actually take me that long. So let me play through that for you and we can um, have a little cheeky look. Bosh, now I'm not gonna lie, that does not look bad at all. It could do with a tiny bit of work on the mask just so that I can get it perfect because up here on the trees, there is a little bit of glow up here on the trees. But as a quick little number, that ain't too bad. And if I toggle that on and off for you, you can now actually see the difference that that mask is making to the shot. And it just makes it look so much more interesting. Now doing this just creates so much more atmosphere to the shot, whereas before we couldn't really see anything up in the sky, but now we've got all this detail and it really adds a lot of atmosphere. The only issue we've got now, mate, is the fact that we've pushed the image so far, if you look up in the top left-hand side of the frame, the image is starting to break up, mate. No, this is not what we wanted. The image is starting to go all dodgy. We can see a load of color artifacts and it just don't look very pretty, does it, to be honest? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disguise all of that like artifact or moving pixels and that in the top left corner with a cheeky little camera blur, mate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to effects and we're gonna go on blur and we are gonna go to Kimura blur. You can also use the fast blur, but it doesn't really matter. Now you can see, oh no, my whole image is bloody blurry. That is not what we wanted. So what we do is we then go again down to the create mask, Bosch, and then we literally, the same again in that area that has all of that dodgy artifact in, mate. We basically just wanna blur all of that out because it does not look pretty. So we get our mask and then all we do is we whack a little bit of feather on that so that you can't actually see the blur mask. If we just adjust it just a touch, there might be a little bit too much blur on that. So let's bring that down to about, what, 10 maybe? And then if we scrub through that image, that artifact in and all that on that left hand side is nowhere near as bad as it was before. Now obviously we can go in a lot more intensely and make sure that we completely get rid of all that with the mask, but I'm pretty happy with that. It's on the edge of frame. Mike is essentially the subject of the frame, so people's eyes aren't gonna be up in the left hand side of frame anyway, but that ain't bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Boom, and there you have it. So that there is the finished shot with the new sky mate which absolutely looks about 20 times better 
than it did when I very first had it. So yeah, happy day. Anyway, people, thank you so much for watching this cheeky little tutorial. I hope it did help you out in some kind of way. Adding all of these little elements into your grade really is gonna complete your image, complete your look, and it is just gonna increase your little tools that you've got in your edit. So if I was you, get down there, start retaining the colors in your sky, and um, yeah, your shots are just gonna look better end of the day. So yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and um, I'll be catching you lots in the next video. Peace.